Monument Valley is part of the Navajo Nation and is one of the most stunning areas in the Southwest. Officially known as the Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park, the land here features stunning sandstone formations that rise out of the earth and have been the backdrop to many well-known western movies over the last century. The best way to experience this park is to drive a 17 mile scenic road which takes you to many different overlooks as you drive a dirt road across the magnificent landscape. My dad and I did the drive in February 2022 and here's all the information on our visit to Monument Valley. We stayed at the View Hotel the previous night so we could watch the sunrise from the deck of our room. It's a pretty incredible experience and definitely an amazing place to stay if you're looking to overnight in the area. So they only allow 25 people to do the scenic drive at one time and it opens at 8 a.m. It's 7.55 and we are number 10 in line and there's about nine cars behind us. So we'll see if everybody gets in or not. But yeah, you can't get in until someone leaves after they've filled the quota. We had no problem getting in and we're in the first group and they gave us two hours to explore. We stopped at every one of the overlooks and spent some time at a few of them and definitely used our entire two hours. It would be easy to even spend a half day in here with how beautiful it is. The road through the park is dirt, but there was no problems for two wheel drive cars when we were there. This is stop number one on the Monument Valley Scenic Drive right here where you get the West and East Mittens and Merrick Butte, I think it's called. I thought that that was stop number one right there, but this is officially stop number one right here. Look at that view. This view is the most iconic in Monument Valley with the West Mitten Butte and the East Mitten Butte. Whenever you see anything related to Monument Valley, you'll probably see one of the mittens. Stop number two from Merrick Butte, but you still get a pretty amazing view over there as well. Cowboy Pops and Merrick Butte. My dad is a huge fan of the old western movies and so Monument Valley was one of the highlights of this road trip for him. They do a great job with the way the scenic drive is laid out as there's lots of easy to find overlooks that give you great views of the many different formations you can see back here. It's one of those areas where you just want to plan to drive slow and soak it all in. Stop number three, Elephant. Still an amazing view back that way. <laughs> I think that's the elephant. I'm not exactly sure how it looks like an elephant either, but that's what the sign says. As you continue to head back, you'll get to the Three Sisters, which is the last viewpoint on the main stretch of the road before starting the loop that goes through the back area. Next up, we got the Three Sisters. I honestly wonder how long that middle one's even gonna be there. It's tiny. The Three Sisters is one of my favorite formations, especially as you take the drive out to John Ford's Point. The moon setting through the Three Sisters right there. There it goes, it's basically down now. That is so cool though. This is the next point of interest, it's John Ford's Point. This area was named after John Ford, who was an American director. He was one of the most influential people in making Monument Valley famous as he featured it in Stagecoach and then in nine other additional films. This point was named in his honor and was used in his movie, The Searchers. Apparently there's someone who stands out here with a horse for tips, but I don't see anybody right now. I wish I could have got the iconic shot with the man sitting on the horse out in the point, but there's always a next time. You can also shop for souvenirs or get some authentic fry bread before continuing on the scenic drive. The next point of interest is the camel. Let me know, do you see a, a camel for that one? Maybe a little bit. I have to say, after looking back on this footage, it does look like a camel. As we started the loop portion of the drive, the road was a little worse here, but it was still passable with a two-wheel drive car. 
Our next viewpoint is the hub. The hub was supposed to look like the center of a wagon wheel and it was definitely a good name for that rock formation. From this overlook there was beautiful views in every direction. Look at those spires out in front of us. Also note during this part of the drive there are private residences and many places where they ask you not to stop. The loop basically takes you around a massive rock formation known as the Rain God Mesa and over towards another massive rock formation known as Spearhead Mesa. The totem poles out there are one of the places where you can take an actual Navajo guide to get some better photos, so I'm definitely going to do that next time I'm here. After the fact, I read that one of the best experiences in Monument Valley is a sunrise tour of the totem poles. Let me know how it is in the comments. Most of this road is passable with a two-wheel drive car. You just gotta get a little bit slower when you come around this bend. A couple sections are a little rocky, but overall it's pretty nice. In the back side of the park, there's lots of pullouts that don't have any signs or names, so I think this is the Bird Springs pullout, but I'm not really sure as I couldn't tell from the road. From here we headed north and we had the Rain God Mesa on one side and the Spearhead Mesa on the other side. Both were massive rock formations. This is one of our last viewpoints, it's Navajo Code Talker Point. As we got back to this viewpoint, you could see the Mittens and Merrick Butte again. This area is also known as Artist's Point Overlook. When you're looking out over this viewpoint, you can actually come over here and you can see the hotel that we stayed at, which was right there. It's cool that it doesn't really stand out with the landscape, that's nice. This is one of the best viewpoints at the end to just sit and relax at. You can just sit in your car and look out over the view, or there is a bench as well. After leaving the viewpoint, there's only two more spots to stop before you connect with the main road and exit the park. The next one you'll make it to is a fun rock formation known as the Thumb. This is the last viewpoint, it's the windows, the north window, and you can walk up here and you can actually get a great little view to end your time on the trail. Here you can see the mittens from a different perspective, which is kind of interesting as you don't actually see that small rock formation that's on the side of each of the mittens. After leaving the last overlook, you'll finish the loop and connect with the main road. Here's a few more shots of us driving out to end the video. As you can no doubt tell, this is one of the most stunning areas in the southwest and something that you have to experience yourself. A video like this will never do it justice. Also note that there was a really long line to get in when we were leaving. Finished the drive, we're back at our hotel. Honestly, that's like a bucket list southwest experience to have. Definitely do it if you get the chance. That's it for this video. We will see you on the next one.